Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome today. We are looking at the topic, the realm of Christ, the realm of Christ, the domain of Christ, the land of Christ, the territory of Christ, the sphere of Christ. I know there are so many words we can use, but basically we're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ as a dwelling realm, a place where God and his children are dwelling in. So the realm of Christ is the domain of the Godhead. That is where the Godhead dwells. God is too big. The heavens of heavens cannot contain him and yet he dwells in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and that's where he has called us to be. That's the good land he was typifying all through the Old Testament. So the joy of the Christian uh, faith and the joy of us as members of the new creation is that we are not just dwelling on the earth but we are dwelling in Christ which is also the dwelling of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It's a privilege to cohabitate, so to say, with the Divine Trinity. And it's just by sheer privilege. We couldn't have merited it, but God wanted this. This was His plan for us. So redemption was to bring man into the realm of the Godhead. That's the big picture of our salvation. That's where God wanted us to dwell. We could use the Garden of Eden as a type, as a shadow of the realm of Christ, where God actually positioned man to be. And so, because that was the place of communion and fellowship with man on the earth in here. So while not everybody you see on earth is living on earth, everybody you see on earth, for us who are believers in Christ Jesus, yes, physically, we could be here, but in our spirit, we are actually dwelling in Christ, that is the head of all principalities and power, the Son of God Himself, the glory of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. So you could imagine the unending possibilities that accrues to a human who is dwelling in the realm of Christ. There is no limitation in such <laughs> in such realm. There is no will I call it uh, works of darkness. Not that Satan will not try to attack, but we are in that far above realm. That's what God wants to bring our knowledge to experientially. So on judicial front, God has positioned us there. That's why the scriptures say we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So the realm of Christ is the highest realm of existence. That is the highest realm of existence. There is no higher realm than the realm of Christ. It is higher than the heavens. In Hebrews chapter 7, the Lord scripture says the lord says that he who makes intercession for us who is made higher than the heavens so there's a realm in my opinion higher than the heavens where we could almost say the heavens that because you can't put heaven and christ because if you also say heaven and christ then you are asking that which heaven was created hello <laughs> christ was his own created so where was christ where was god dwelling before heaven was created so he, to tell you that there's a realm that is above heaven which we believe is christ himself that's the realm god has brought us into so the realm of christ existed before creation and so whatever existed before creation is superior to creation so before time began, before God created anything, God dwells in himself. And you know when we're talking about God, we're talking about the one true God who is one in essence but three in persons. Very mysterious topic. <laughs> so we keep almost going back there every now and then because when we're talking about God, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, we're not talking of three separate persons. We're talking of one being one essence but in three different manifestations that's a big 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 topic right there but we won't go deep into that but the realm of christ suffice to say existed before creation that is it was in place before anything was created and the joy of the christian race is that god has brought us into that realm god has positioned us to dwell in that sphere and that's where we live, move, and have our being. So God is the chief dweller in the realm of Christ. So the chief dweller, that is the main occupant, the host, so to say, is the Lord himself. God in his triuneness is the chief dweller. there. So you could imagine because um, the Lord said in the Gospels that before um, the goods of a man is scattered from his house, you have to bind the strong man of the house. 
So if it is impossible to bind the strong man of the realm of fire, which is God, that is his goods are safe and secure. That's why the Lord said in John 10 that look, that no one can snatch them from my father's arm. And so the joy of us as Christians is that we are dwelling in the safest and the most impenetrable bunker in the universe so god himself is the land is desiring to bring his children into he is the land is desiring to bring us into so there is no greater land than god there is no better land than god and you, we are, you and i know that the things we see in creation are mirror images of what exists in the realm of the spirit and so colossians 2 tells us that being rooted and grounded in christ that is to tell us that uh, our part of god's ordination for our redemption is that we are rooted and grounded in him so that um, our that's why you could say we walk in him we walk in Christ we walk in the spirit it's not a physical land so to say but it is a realm where because fish as well the realm of the fish is water the realm of the birds are is in the air so the realm of God is Christ and that's the realm he has brought us into so this land of god is called the realm of christ so when we say the realm of christ we are talking about the land of god not like a physical land but we have to use earthly illustration just like the lord was saying i'm the true vine i'm the true bread i'm the true uh, vine because he was using the physical things we can see to illustrate a principle which i mean there's really no parallel but at least we can borrow something that is close to it so the land of god is Christ. So if they should ask you and I, where are you living? We say we are living in the land of God. Our bodies might be dwelling in Boston, in South Africa, in Australia, in Netherlands, in England, but our spirit is dwelling in the realm of God, in the realm of Christ. And that's actually the part of the reason why God is living in us so that our mind also will be dwelling in that realm and i believe that was a question that god first asked man i mean the first question humanity had for adam when god when he had disobeyed god adam where are you it wasn't a question of a physical location god knew he was in the garden but where are you located where is your spirit <laughs> where is your mind and it's a question continuously every day because the mind seems to be going back and forth and god wants our mind to be on said the lord will keep him in perfect peace whose heart or whose mind is stayed on him that where i am there you may be also in john chapter 14. so we could say that almost the greater part of his redemption and his incarnations were targeted at this goal to bring us to where he was so Christ bring, came to bring us into himself because into himself is where the Father is. He is the house of the Father. He is the temple of God, the tabernacle of God, the reality of it, and he is that realm. And so he couldn't bring us into that realm before his death or his crucifixion. His crucifixion had to happen. That's why he said in John chapter 12, except the grain of wheat, wheat fall to the ground and die, it abide myself, but if it for dies it will produce much fruit so it was upon his resurrection we were now able to be brought into that realm into that atmosphere into that sphere whereby we can say that we are the sons of god the children of god because we are dwelling in christ jesus so christ is an ecosystem that's an environment is a sphere so he is the habitation for god and his children that's why we are called the family of god the household of god as Ephesians to cause it so we are members of the family of god because we are dwelling and it's not like god is dwelling in a physical place because the whole of he contains the whole sphere but the the, the picture of it is like there's a place where everything is living and moving in god but there's a realm in god where fish and i would think that the birds or some things don't exist there and so that's what we're saying they are just like in the i mean god can be good but let me just say the sea for example there are levels and realms through which the aquatic fish dwell in there are some that can go 300 feet above or below some are 500 feet depending on the boundary god has set for if they go below it they will choke to death yes it's the same sea but they are levels so even in god god contains the heavens and the earth but we are saying that the highest realm in the realm of god is christ that is the realm he has redeemed us to so christ is the good land god was typifying in the entire old testament in the entire old testament the good land and you will notice that right from when god drove adam out of the garden of eden we see 
especially when Abraham was called. Abraham was called so as God said he was going to show him a land, the Canaan land, the good land. That land was typifying Christ. Isaac, Jacob, just the 12 tribes when they got to Moses and that was the reason, part of the reason, main reason why God had to bring them out of the land of bondage to a good land he was taking them to. They were going through the wilderness and even the Christian race as well, the Christian faith is a call by God to this good land called Christ or the realm of Christ so that we are, for, we are in the land of bondage in the kingdom of darkness and God in his sovereignty calls us forth and now we are going through that journey of transformation, sanctification into that good land of Christ so that we will be conformed to his image. So Christ is the reality of the good land God promised Abraham and his descendants. So the land is a person. In the Old Testament, it was a physical land, just like a lot of types and shadows in the Old Testament, where it talk about the temple was a type of Christ, the showbread is a type of Christ, the lampstand is a type of Christ, the animal sacrifices were different, and the offerings were types of Christ, the kings were types of Christ in their authority figures, the prophet, the priest, they were all typifying Christ. So the land as well was typifying Christ. The reality of the land is Christ. That's why our promised land or our Canaan land in the New Testament is a person and that's why 1st Corinthians chapter 1 we still read it as well that it is of God you are in Christ Jesus who is made unto us who is not just a person is also a mystical realm so he's not just a person he's also a mystical realm that is a is a mystery because it's a mystery in itself how a person can be a realm, how a person can be an environment and because when we think about a person our head is thinking about maybe even in the four gospel that he came in the flesh but it's much more than that that was an incarnated form but the glorified christ is a realm that's why all through the new testament we keep saying in christ in christ in him because god is saying that he has put us in christ because while he was on the cross of calvary god put us in him so that's why the scripture said we are crucified with him because in the eyes of God and even Ad, Ad, Christ is not the first realm so to say in terms of to man Adam was a realm because when Adam sinned God reckoned that sin to every mortal human being that's why in the fall of Adam was the fall of the human race it's like the head if the head should sin then the other parts of the body are also liable to it as well so now Christ came like if you read more on Romans chapter 5. So if death was reckoned to every man because of the sin of Adam, God is justified to as many that to, to justify as many that believe in Christ to impute righteousness into us. So visibly, Christ is a person. No doubt about that. Invisibly, he is a realm. So while he was here in his um, earthly ministry, um, he could not be everywhere at the same time because he took on the form of the seed of Abraham and there was restriction, a finite being. He could not be in multiple places at the same time. But in his glorified state and before his incarnation, he existed, he, he condescended to our level to save us because man messed up, man fell, man caused the problem. So a man has to solve the problem. So God had to come in form of a man to redeem us. So invisibly, he is a realm. And this time, he is with us anywhere we go. That's why I said, Lo, I am with you uh, everywhere. Because now, uh, even to the end of age, that is, no believer is outside the realm of Christ. And the, the, the challenge now is to be conscious of that realm so that we can talk from that realm, we can operate from that realm. So Christ is the realm God and man dwell in. Christ is the realm God and man are dwelling in. Isn't that <laughs> just use, for the sake of using illustration, imagine someone dwelling in the presidential villa of their country. I mean, their level is in another level. They will hear conversations that are classified i mean they more than likely are saying in the most secured physically so to say place dignitaries and what have you and that's the realm god has invited us into and that's why we are indebted to praising and thanking the lord continually because he has that's why david was saying that i would rather dwell in the house of the lord that in his presence that is a day in the house of the lord is more than a thousand years so we can see the privilege dwelling in the secret place of the lord so god has brought his people into an impenetrable bunker called the realm of christ it is an impenetrable bunker it is a it is our 
tower of refuge it is our it is our secret place and so we are secured in him in him we live we move and have our being and just like any truth of scriptures god has to god helping us to be able to come to the knowledge of it and now we are we are meditating and now we are operating from that realm that we are not just in this physical realm here because if all we are cognizant of is what our senses can see or what our uh, human what uh, the average human nature of faculties can perceive then we are no bit different from the others but we know there's an advantage to us there is an x factor to our being there is a superior dimension to everything about us so the realm of christ is the heavenly place we are seated with christ we can see more of this in ephesians chapter 2 that he has raised us up and made us to sit together in heavenly places in christ that's where we walk from that's not our future inheritance that is what god has made to be our reality now it's, it's a joy it's a mystery yes it's because of real heaven sometimes i used to think oh it's somewhere in the uh, in the high heaven it's a dimension that is accessible to even where we're here that god has almost we could almost say god has brought heaven to us in the person of the lord jesus christ so that we are dwelling on the earth but meanwhile our redwelling is in the realm of christ so it's just like we have your shadows and you have the substance so god is saying that the shadow is the earth the physical that we can see the reality of our dwelling is the person of the lord jesus Christ. that's why he said i am the true vine abide in me live in me make me your home what a joy every creature dwells in a certain realm to maintain their existence every creature must have a certain realm where they dwell to maintain their existence because without fishes have their existence in the waters the birds have their existence in the air different animals in the jungles they know their limitation they know their boundaries there are certain there are certain aquatic animals that can't live in the river but in the sea those that live in the sea might not survive because of the salt content in the river so we can see different and god has created it like that, that everyone has their boundary only god is boundless only God in exists in every realm. And now what God has now done for us, the new creation man, is that he has brought us into the realm of himself. Wow. It's a joy just to meditate upon that. That Wow. Thank you for bringing us into that realm. So the realm of man is the earth. The realm of a believer is Christ Jesus. The realm of a mortal man is the earth. So that's why um, a natural man is limited by whatever the earthly limitation placed on him. God doesn't want that to be our uh, our perception, our conception, because that's not our reality. The earth is not our reality. Even like he said in Psalm 24, the earth he has made to be on the seas, because the earth is not going to be forever. It's going to wipe it away. So God's goal for our life is like, we are living in the reality that we are dwelling in him god in christ that's where he has positioned us it's because every other thing is going to be shaken like hebrews chapter one every god that created the earth there's a time the whole earth will pass away so first corinthians chapter one verse 30 that it is of god we are in christ is our but of him are you in christ is this christ is a person is also an office because everything God has for us and the new creation is domiciled in Christ. It is through the office of Christ that God executes his agenda. His agenda in creation, his agenda in redemption. Everything God will do is through the office of Christ. So God has put us in him. And by putting us in him, it means that his reality is also our reality. That is his authority that God, that's why sometimes it's like is this for real that's what god did or whether we are living that reality to its extreme or to its fullness is a different kettle of fish of course that's where the praying in the spirit for god to open the eyes of our understanding so that our mindset will we think as well so we now we are operating as people who have dominion on the earth authorities over the powers of darkness because we are functioning from a different higher realm your life this is another scripture your life is hidden with christ in god from colossians 3 4 that god has hidden us in christ with christ in god because god will not take chances with our life god redeemed us so that we can dwell in him he didn't redeem us to 
go and sort out ourselves or on the folly of our own. He redeemed us so that our dwelling will be in Him. And the joy of the Christian race is that our life is hidden with Christ in God. Isn't it a privilege? Isn't it an honor that the Most High God deemed it fit that we creatures <laughs> now called sons of God through redemption in Christ Jesus to see that our life is hidden with Christ. So anywhere I go, anywhere you go as a child of God, that consciousness that I'm in union with Christ, there's more to me than people see. There is more to my name than just what is in black and white because I'm dwelling in Christ. There's an aura, there's a fragrance of Christ all over me, over my wife, my children, ditto for you as a child of God as well. So God has domiciled all our blessings all his blessings for us in the realm of Christ. So everything God has for us is in Christ. Christ has made wisdom for us. Whether it is peace, it is in Christ. There is nothing God has for us as children in the New Testament, our inheritance, that is not in Christ. Everything is packaged in there. That's why it's called the unsearchable riches of Christ. Because So whatever that need is, whether it is victory in battle, whether it is... Um, intelligent the glory of god deliverance whatever it is god has placed everything and somebody might ask why did god place all our blessing all his blessings for ephesians 1 3 says that blessed be god and father of our lord jesus who has blessed us with heavenly places in christ jesus in the heavenly places so in union with christ so why god did that is that i believe that god could not trust his inheritance for us to be in the hands of any mortal man or system so initially god kept our resources in adam but it appears like adam handed over the resources our first parent to satan through falling to the temptation because satan now became the god of man because of the fall so god now could say that look rather than put it in the man i will put it in myself in my incarnated form and now so our inheritance so in adam but adam handed everything over to satan <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's why he could tell the Lord Jesus Christ and during the temptation on the mount that, look, this whole kingdom has been given to me. Because Adam gave the lease of the earth to him. But thank God, Christ has possessed it back in his death and resurrection. For the key of hell and death is in the hands of him who destroyed him. So God, wanting, want, not wanting anyone tampering with his inheritance, kept them all in the realm of Christ. So God doesn't want anyone tampering with his, that's why I say that, in uh, Acts chapter 20, I think 28, uh, chapter 20, 32, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, death, brethren, I commend you to God and it will, to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you your own inheritance among the saints. So it is through the word of grace, who is Christ himself, that's how we obtain this inheritance, through sanctification as well. So you can see that God, not wanting anyone tampering with our inheritance, kept them all in the realm of christ everything he has for us god has kept it in the realm of christ it is in nowhere it is to be found nowhere but in christ so the joy of the christian faith the joy of our salvation is that everything whether it is wisdom no matter what that thing is god says it is in christ and so god wants us to be christ conscious god wants us to live from that realm for the joy so realm of christ is where god's unsearchable riches is so that's the realm where everything about god and because that's the realm where god himself is dwelling that's the realm where the spirit of god functions from because it's a sphere it's a sphere and many times so if someone says how do i get conscious of that realm? how do i come there that well, to the little that i know is by we meditate on it we let it permeate our heart so that in any situation we are not even quick to look at because the more you see the, 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 the uh, whatever we feed our eyes and ears with we become more conscious of it so if people fill their hearts with canalities what they are watching is not really a defined but we are reading materials anointed materials saturating your being you cannot but help to be conscious that you are dwelling in christ so feeding on solid materials a lot of anointed teachings on christ on the new creation reality what we now find out is like before you know your mind will start being to an autopilot whereby in any situation it will be like no there's more to me than this physical limitation in here i am dwelling in a higher realm dwelling with god so when anyone calls on god from the realm of christ god is bound to answer god is obligated because god is the one that created the system like that. i don't mean that we 
somebody just calling just asking for something randomly from nowhere or things that are injurious there's a place where we grew to maturity galatians 3 says it and here as long as you remain his child doesn't differ from his servant so god is calling us to maturity so that we can begin to legislate over our cities over our nations we can begin to issue decrees and because now we are coming to maturity to the point whereby we are now finding that nothing is impossible to us because we are executing the divine agenda it will not be a reality in my opinion to anyone who has not been brought to maturity because god has to first work within us before he changes situations on the external so first of all god works within before he changes outside so by the time god is working within he's aligning our thoughts our mindset our likes our love our passion to his so that when he is now opening more doors and avenue already is is satisfied is pleased that our heart is not going to be like the prodigal son it's not going to be the, the goods will not or the riches will not be our reign because we have been brought to that maturity so in this reign god makes that which is impossible to be but there's no impossibility in this reign because god knows no difficulty let alone any limit any impossibility there's no such thing as impossible that's why i said the all things are possible to him who believe because we are believing in him that's why he asked mary he says look with your brother do you believe your brother say yeah yeah i'm the resurrection and the life i'm not talking about i can raise the dead now huh? so we can see the realm the level that god has brought us into in the new testament so in this realm god makes that which is impossible to be a reality to be a possibility so our life should be a life of will i call it living from the position of an authority a superior mindset not superior against our fellow brothers and sisters but a superior dominion that's the dominion mandate a dominion mindset that we are here as regents of the king of kings to carry out his influence or to execute his influence and his will on the earth in here in the various sectors of human endeavor the seven mountains whether it's in the sports and the entertainment in the technological space and the governments in education we are influencing there as the salt of the earth as the light of the world what a joy so the realm of christ is where the great monarch rules over the universe so god is ruling over the heavens and the earth from the realm of christ that's where i believe his throne is the throne of grace so we find out that god ruling over because he's governing the universe from that realm and that's why he could call us to that place so that we can issue decrees that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever we lose on earth will be loose in heaven this is this these are the things that make us just bow down in adoration to god grateful for bringing us into that realm into that sphere whereby we can say that we are children of god god has redeemed us god is sanctifying us god has called us to a higher order of himself so the realm of christ is where the great monarch the king of king himself is dwelling what a joy to god in christ so the realm of christ is also the secret place of the most sister 91 of obviously you know that christ didn't come into existence when he got incarnated he's existed from eternity is the world who has been with god with god and with god as well so the secret place in that psalm 91 is actually the realm of christ that is and this realm we have access to it from our heart so it is not a distant or a remote location it's a dimension which our heart has access to at every point in time and so that's why maybe scripture says we should guide our hearts with all diligence so it's the secret place so we go there in worship to god in praise to god in the holiest of all in adoration to him in lavishing him with praises for what he has done for us in christ jesus so the realm of christ is the secret place of the most high the dwelling of the most high because what god has done for us no power in heaven and earth can surpass it no inheritance can be greater than the inheritance god has given to us in christ jesus it is above description there is no words will fail us to express the magnitude and immensity of what he has done for us so christ is a mystical realm where divinity mingles with humanity there's fellowship the infinite god the god that dwells in the midst of the shareable the god that dwells in unapproachable light has made himself brought himself to our level condescended so that man mortal man can have fellowship and communion with him so the, the the greatest use of any time or 
wisest way to invest any time is investing it in his friends and i'm not just saying that physically we lock ourselves but if you have if you have opportunities that's fine there are other day to day but it is the heart you can be in the middle of the board meeting or in the white house on the president villa but your heart is dwelling in god and that's where god is seeking for that's the secret place he wants that that's where he wants our heart to be domiciled so it is a mystical realm where divinity mingles with humanity humanity that's why the scripture say that he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him we are one spirit with the lord he has made us one spirit with himself that's the new testament that's the new creation that is god's salvation so the realm of christ is the habitation of the trinity where the father the son and the spirit dwell the habitation the dwelling place you know it's a coherence union where the father is in the son the son is in the father it's a union whereby you see the son and you've met with the father you've met with the spirit the spirit is speaking yet is the father and the son speaking the son is uh, walking and yet the spirit and the father it's a beautiful union but we don't want to go deep into the trinity because every one of us we are but growing in that knowledge of how mysterious it is that god is one but triune in his triune so it is the habitation of the divine trinity that's where god has brought us into what a joy to what god has done for us so the realm of christ is also where god has full authority to exert his will in us that is he has that that's why we can read in philippians 2 13 for example that it is god who works in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure also in hebrews chapter 13 as well 2021 20, now the god of peace may he make us perfect in every good work working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight through christ jesus and because you could almost say that god has brought us into christ so that our life will now be god's workshop that's the production center whereby God begins to walk everything in our life from. So God begins to walk his desires, walk his purpose, walk his will through and in us to the blessing of humanity. So the realm of Christ is where God has, has, has full authority to exert his will. You know, that is, we have given him permission. He's knocking at the door of our hearts and we're saying, Lord, please, yes, walk your desire in me. Walk what is well pleasing in you, in my life. I'm incapable of doing it in my flesh because he's going to get all the glory at the end of the day so satan is a no factor in this realm so in the realm of christ satan is a no factor by no factor meaning that the only way is what that's what he seeks many times is to lure people into doing things that will make them unconscious of the realm god has placed them so it might come with lies it might come with tricks it might blind the eyes and the, the minds of people like second corinthians chapter 4 talks about it could come with condemnation because he, he knows it that the greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world the moment we are conscious of that reality and we are living in consciousness of it we find out that we start speaking with that authority we start acting in faith from that authority so satan is a no factor in this realm there is no fear of satan in our heart in that realm for as many that god has placed us in that realm not that he does not that we ignore him we issue command to him just like a president of a country for example uh, you want to say what will i say a rat is a no factor in the presidential villa there's no threat whatsoever to the president no matter what the rat is doing in the city he can't be claiming that he's going to destroy the president so in the realm of christ we exchange our weakness for his strength and so continually and so it will amount like okay are we living in the earth or are we going to the realm of christ and coming out of it i think it might be the position of our heart our heart postures that's why we keep that's why the scriptures uh john 15 say abide in me the lord said abide in me and i in you we keep bringing our mind our hearts back to the lord we are looking beholding him as in the glass in the mirror so that we'll be transformed from glory to glory that we are moving from one dimension to another dimension so in the realm of christ we exchange our weakness for his strength as we wait on him as we meditate on him as we walk with him as we fellowship with him we just find out that in our weakness his strength is made perfect so the three realms of man's existence are basically adam satan and christ that those are the three basic realms first a person is born a newborn baby innocent is born into adam by the time they get into the age of accountability and they've not made their choice for christ 
then by default they are in the realm of satan and when if they do make their decision for christ they get into the realm of christ and so for and whatever realm anyone is operating for there are laws for each of those realms there are dimensions there are limitations except in the realm of christ where there is no domination uh, limitation there's condemnation in the realm of satan because they are those in that realm have the wrath of god on them they are brood of vipers in the eyes of God. They are enemies of God. Those in the realm of Christ, they are sons of God, the children of God, the family of God. They have God as a co-dweller with them in the realm of Christ. They are seated with Christ in heavenly places. What a joy to what God has done. So Christ is a realm far above principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a realm because it's the head of all principalities and power. So that's why we don't fear them. We wage a warfare, but we are fighting from a victory standpoint. I'm not saying that we ignore the powers of darkness and we pretend they don't exist. That's not what we are saying. We are living in this world. The Lord prayed in John chapter 17 that the Father should keep us from the evil one. But we are saying that we are exercising authority. Because we know there's a battle, there's a warfare continually that is going on, but we are not fighting from a position of unequal ground. It's, if I could equate it this way, some countries like US, their air force is, I mean, superb, and they, if they are fighting a country that doesn't even have air force, <laughs> see how easy it is. They know fully well that they have superior air power. And so you can see that we have superior air power, so to say, against the enemy, because we are fighting from a realm that is far above that realm so christ is like a massive jumbo 747 plane we are living in just a type of course christ is not a plane that is limited but just for our eyes to be able to our mind to picture something so we are living in that realm of christ a plane so to say that we're moving so anywhere you are that's what it means that we are in christ and christ is in us so that where i am there you may be also so god's goal for us is to dwell where he is there is no safer place than to be in God. There is no more secured place than the place, the secret place of the Most High. So God's goal for us in redemption, in our salvation, in our sanctification, that's what Christ came to die for. And that's, what, that's why he was saying that I am going to a place that in my Father's house there are many abodes. There are many abodes is himself. There are many dwellings. So in his father's house, he is the father's house that there are many dwellings. So that where I am, dear, you may be also. And upon his resurrection, he has brought us into that realm. Chopped us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So his name is a realm, a very strong tower. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. And at the name of Jesus, at the person of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the name is a person. And so that name is a realm. It's a secured realm. It's a place where we pray. It's a, it's a realm where we wage warfare against the enemy. It's a realm where we also intercede where we supplicate, where we fellowship, where we worship God in spirit and in truth. Everything we are to do in the new creation should be from that realm. Holy joy. So he came to bring us into himself. So we could almost summarize the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ was to bring us into himself because that's where he wants us to dwell. That's why he said, I mean, earlier on in the gospel, he said, follow me. But when he was going to the cross, the tail end of his earthly ministry he said, it wasn't just follow me, but abide in me. You are not going to follow me from a distance, so to say, if I could paraphrase what he's saying, that but you are going to dwell in me and I in you so that we are one. So that by me living in you, for you to live is for me to live. So for us to live is for Christ to live. So the joy and the majesty of the new creation is that we are dwelling in God and God is dwelling in us in christ jesus that's the realm where we fall so we start we finish from where we started today that the realm of christ is the domain of the godhead so abide okay the one more abide in me and i in you abide means make me your home make me your resting place continually in the in the face of any situation that lord what are you saying lord guide us in this path what decision should we make it's not about us our life is to bring glory to your name what path should we take and i in you that is as our heart is on him he will be living that means it's almost like him saying that look you dwell in me and you see me dwelling and living through you 
And so we also go back to him to pray to him, help us to dwell in you, help us to abide in you, help us to make you our home to make you our dwelling place, our eternal abode and dwelling. So the realm of Christ is the domain of the Godhead. So today we've been able to look at the topic, the realm of Christ. We said that the realm of Christ is the domain of the Godhead. That is where God dwells in his person with his children. That's the dwelling, the habitation of the Holy Trinity. And we also said that Christ is not just a person. Christ is also a mystical realm. A realm is a sphere that creatures can live in. There are different realms. There is a realm for the water where fish dwelling there's a realm in the air where boats moving there's a realm on the earth where humans living there's a realm in the bush as well there are different areas of realm so we say that god contains every realm because in god everything lives most and has it been but we say there are levels and dimensions in god and the highest dimension in that realm of god is the realm of christ and that's where god has positioned us that's why we're, the scripture says we are seated with christ in heavenly places it is of god we are in christ jesus nobody can bring themselves into the realm of christ only god can bring us into that realm and god the joy of the new testament is that what christ promised that where i am dear you may be and that's the realm he has brought us what a joy to what the lord has done for us hallelujah to god the father hallelujah to god the son hallelujah to god the holy spirit praise the lord hallelujah